Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for another video. Today we're looking at future logs, or more specifically a collection of different styles of future log you can use when setting up a new bullet journal. At this stage I haven't decided which style of future log I'm going to be using in my next journal, so do make sure to let me know which style you use or which style is your favourite in the comments below. For those of you just getting into bullet journaling, a future log is a space for you to record upcoming events and tasks. Ones that are happening on months ahead of any month you've already set up in your journal. So for instance, if the current month is May, but your friend wants to make plans for October, and you don't actually have October set up in your journal yet, you'd record those plans in your future log. Some can be quite simple, some can be a little bit more involved, but today we're going to have a look at some of the different styles you could use. As future logs typically involve a whole heap of little number writing, in particular if you're using styles with many calendars, so that I didn't have to do this over and over for this video, I decided to make some mini calendars on the computer and print them off. These are sized either so that the full week fits across 8 boxes, or so that each number fits into an individual box in my journal, so a half centimetre by a half centimetre. If, like me, you'd prefer not to have to write all of those numbers out, I do have these as a free downloadable over on my Patreon. You don't have to be a patron to get them, but do make sure to check that out if you think it would be helpful. On to the ideas though, our first one is inspired by the bullet journal method. Writer Carol describes dividing each page of a spread into three horizontal sections, so in his version just ruling two horizontal lines across the page. You can see I've added an extra line at the top and bottom, just because I think it looks a little better, but then what you do is just go and label each of those sections with the name for each month. To populate this, you then just write out a list of any of the events you have coming up in those months, by denoting what day of the month it's happening on, and a little description of what it is you're doing. If you're looking to save space though, you can of course divide the spread into 12 sections, just by drawing a vertical line down the middle of both pages. That one is certainly the quickest and easiest of the ideas we have, but flipping over we're on to our next one. In this vertical style we have a column for each month where you can record upcoming events. For the one I'm doing here, I've gone with three columns per page, and I've also decided to fit two months into each column. Of course if you did have quite a few events that you were wanting to record, you could just have one month per column. The headers that I have for this are just the numbers for each month, and then I went in with those mini calendar printouts which are sized to be 8 squares across. Because these are printouts, this one also didn't take too long, but if you had to write all those numbers in by hand, it can be a little more time consuming. If vertical wasn't really your style but you do like mini calendars, stay tuned for the section at the end of the video where we look at some of my previous future logs, but flipping over we're onto a style that I haven't used before but I'm mighty tempted to do so. This one I'm going to call the jigsaw future log. Rather than having all of the sections be vertical or all of the sections be horizontal, what you instead do is use a mixture of both. What I did to plan this one out was first start by sectioning off each page into three columns and four rows, and then to make the boxes for each month I just combined two adjacent sections. This one does take a little bit more planning, so I do recommend going in with pencil first. Despite me doing this, I did still manage to missize some of my boxes. So the second box down on the left of each page is a little bit shorter than the other horizontal boxes. It's not overly noticeable though, and this does make for a fun future log. In this style I again made use of those mini calendar printouts, however these were the ones where the numbers fit into one square each, so the calendar ends up being only seven squares across. Given the amount of ruling that needs to be done on this one, it does take a little bit longer than the last future log but it is certainly a visually interesting style. Over the page we have another quick future log setup, which is the Alastair method. For this one you just list the initials for each of the months along the top of the page, and then have a column for whatever symbol you use for your events. I use circles. The rest of the columns are to list the events that you have. When it comes to populating this one, in the first free row you write down the day number under the initial of the relevant month, and then list whatever the event is on the right. Hopefully that makes sense, but if not, I do have a couple of populated versions of this one when we get to looking at my previous future logs. As I said though, this one is quite quick to set up, and even quicker if you don't draw out all of the circles like I did, and just add them as you need them. 
Our next one is another style that I've used previously, and this is the Calendex. The design of this one comes from Eddie Hope, and it consists of relatively narrow columns for each of the months. The ones that I have here are four spaces wide, which allows for six months per page. You have the numbers 1 through 31 down the side, and each calendar week is separated with a horizontal line. To populate this one, rather than writing in what events you have, for any day that you have something on, you instead write down what page number you can find the details for that event on. This is where the calendar gets its name, in Calendar Index. Given the way it works though, the calendar style does require you to have numbered pages in your journal either pre-printed or ones that you filled in yourself. One of the helpful things about this style though is that you can really easily see on which days in any month you already have things on. The other future logs we've looked at so far would require you to check all of the day numbers in the month to find that information. As I said, I have used this style previously, so if you wanted to see one that's all filled in, that'll be in the section where we look at my previous future logs. Over the page though and onto another style, which is the mind map future log. The nice part about this style is that because you don't have pre-sectioned off spaces for each month, it means the events for any given month can take up as much space as they need, within reason. You start by putting a title in the middle of the spread, and then branching off this you have all of the months you want to include. To populate this with your events, you then just draw smaller sub-branches coming off the relevant month. This is certainly one of the more creative styles of future log that I came across when I was researching for this video. And if you wanted to see some of the other inspiration I found, do make sure to check out the future logs Pinterest board that I have linked in the description box below. Our next idea is similar to the mind map style, but a bit more structured. For this one, I'm using another printable, but this one is circular. It's also available over on my Patreon, but only to patrons in my $1 tier or higher. After cutting it out though, in each of the 12 spaces I wrote the months of the year and then stuck this into the center of the spread. To mark out the sections that I'd write my events into, I just ruled in some horizontal and diagonal dividing lines. This style probably works better for people who don't have a whole heap of events to write in their future log, in particular for any specific month, but I've also seen it been used for birthday calendars, which looks pretty cool. It goes without saying that the ideas in this video aren't exhaustive, there are a bunch of other ways you can set up a future log, and of course endless ways you can decorate them. The ones I've set up in this video I've tried to keep a little bit more minimal so you can kind of see the skeleton of it, but you could use different colours, doodles, washi tape, whatever else to make it your own. Along with those ideas though, I do of course have the future logs I've used in my previous journals. In my first bullet journal, I went with this vertical style, so we have numbers 1 through 31 down the side of the page, and then I just have a column for each month. I used little boxes to colour code when the weekends were and when my school holidays were, and then little icons for things that happen on certain days of the month, and another little icon for things like date night. In the larger spaces though, I could just write down what the events were. In my second bullet journal, I went with the calendar system, so four squares across for each column. I put a list of the events I already knew about down the side here, and I also had my key at the top so I knew which pen colours I was using. Again, I also colour coded when my holidays were using these little coloured dots, and also colour coded when our bin collections were using these little pink dots. I used a similar system again in my third journal, so again having a list of events that I already knew were coming up. But in my fourth journal I decided to go with this vertical style with the mini calendars. Although this journal ran from July through to December, I decided to start the future log at August because I'd already have my monthly calendar set up for July, so I didn't really see the point of putting it in my future log. I used the same style again for my fifth journal, starting in February rather than January for the same reason, but I changed it up and went with the Alastair method in my sixth journal. In this one I also paired with a year at a glance so that I could see what day of the week each day of the month fell on. In my seventh bullet journal, I did something different again and set up a series of one page calendars that I could write my events in. This one I also paired with an Alastair style page, just for any events that fell outside of the range of my calendars. And in the journal before my current one, I went with this horizontal style. You can see I didn't really use it all that much, which is why I actually decided not to use a future log of my current journal. 
Hopefully the future logs that I set up in this video and the ones from my past journals have given you guys some inspiration. Question of the day of course is which style of future log is your favourite? I seem to tend towards the vertical one when I do my future logs, but I'm still not 100% sold on what style I'm going to use in my next journal. As always team, thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity and personal development. Until next time, bye!